Rum is the wild, wild west of spirits. In this video, I made 10 different cocktails showcasing how incredible rum cocktails can be and they don't have to be that crazy. Here are 10 rum drinks that don't suck. But all right, let's get right into it. Let's start off with a super easy and refreshing cocktail, the Planter's Punch. This is an old rum cocktail, very easy to make and absolutely delightful. So first thing we're gonna do is two ounces of a really nice, robust Jamaican rum. I really love Smith & Cross for this. It's gonna stand up well in this cocktail and it's a 57% ABV. It's a Navy strength rum, which is incredible. So two ounces of this, my last two ounces. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of our house-made grenadine. And if you wanna learn how I make it, I have an entire video that you can check out right over here. We're gonna do a half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice, which I had done ahead of time. And we're gonna add some ice to this and shake it up. We're gonna grab our highball glass, fresh ice, and then we're going to double strain right in there. So I've seen some recipes omit this next ingredient. I've seen some recipes also include it, which is a splash of soda water. I like it. I think it's gonna give a little bit more effervescence to the cocktail. I'm just gonna fill it up to the top there. And then last but not least, to finish this out, we just need a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters over the top. And then we're gonna garnish with a pineapple frond and some mint. And there we have a planter's punch. Mm so good you get that funky jamaican rum coming across there it's refreshing it's tropical but very complex because it's of that jamaican rum really easy really delightful next up let's make one of my absolute favorite daiquiri variations the parasol and so we're going to do two ounces of a white rum i'm using privateer which is local to me here in massachusetts and i love it we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of a banana liqueur i really like gaffard's banana du brazil absolutely incredible it gives it a really rich banana flavor without it being like a Laffy Taffy almost. We need a half ounce of fresh pineapple juice. And lastly, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. And shake it up. Grab our chilled coupe and double strain this out. And then to finish this cocktail off, we're going to grate some fresh nutmeg over the top. And there you have a parasol. God damn, I love that. That is so good. It's super tropical. That nutmeg just adds a nice added layer of that like nuttiness to the top of it that is just so, 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 so good. I love this cocktail so much. So this next cocktail, I really wanted to include a Mai Tai in this video, a real Mai Tai, but I realized I've actually done that recently in another video. And so instead we're gonna do one of my favorite variations on the Mai Tai, the Bitter Mai Tai. I know, I wish there was a better name for it, but I promise you it's not all that bitter and it's actually delightful. So we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of an aged Jamaican pot still rum. Normally it would call for Smith & Cross, since you guys watched me use the last of my Smith & Cross, we're gonna use Hamilton's Jamaican pot still black. So three quarters of an ounce of a Jamaican rum. We're gonna do a half ounce of Campari. We're gonna do a half ounce of dry curacao. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of our house made orja which I have a video on our channel as well on how to make, so you can check that out right there. And one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. We're gonna add just a couple of cubes to the shaker tin. We're not gonna fill it up all the way because we don't wanna over dilute this because we're gonna serve it over crushed ice. And then we're gonna grab our low ball and pour our cocktail right out. Look at that color, oh wow. Fill that up with crushed ice. And then we're gonna garnish with some mint. And there you have the bitter Mai Tai. That Jamaican rum and the Campari play beautifully well off one another. The Orja provides that nice sweetness to bind the two. The lime is amazing and present, and the dry curacao really gives it a nice, tangy, citrusy element. So good, really worth your time, and you should definitely check this one out. Let's switch it up. We've been shaking up all of our cocktails up until this point. Let's make a nice third cocktail. We're going to make a Kingston Negroni. Oh, wow, another Negroni variation. Yeah, 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 but this one, I promise it freaking slaps, all right? First thing we're gonna need is our trusty Jamaican funky rum. Again, the original cocktail calls for Smith & Cross. My dumb self forgot to buy an extra bottle and you saw me use it. So now we're gonna use Hamilton's Jamaican rum here. So we're gonna do an ounce of this, one ounce of our friend Campari once again. Obviously, can't be in a Negroni without it. And an ounce of sweet vermouth. We are gonna do Caparno Antica. Add some ice and stir it down until it's nice, chilled, and diluted. Try not to make a mess, like me. We're gonna grab our low ball, a nice clear cube, and we're going to strain this out over the top. 
And then we're gonna express an orange peel over the top. Let's press that and add that right in there. And there you have a Kingston Negroni. I love the combination of the funky Jamaican rum with the Campari and that sweet vermouth gives it a nice complex base as well. It is a very fun, boozy forward variation on the Negroni. All right, let's keep the stirred cocktail train moving along. We're gonna make a cocktail called the Art of Choke. Yeah, I bet you like that, you nasties. And this cocktail really is fascinating because it, it changes up convention in a really fun way. So the first thing we're gonna need is a whole mint sprig and we're gonna just peel off these and put it right into our mixing glass. We're then gonna do an ounce of a light rum. I'm gonna use Probitas. It has a really fun flavor to it. It's a blend of two different rums. We are then gonna do an ounce of Chinar, which is an artichoke Amaro, hence the name. We're gonna do about a quarter of an ounce of a Demerara syrup and a quarter of an ounce of fresh lime juice. I'm gonna grab my muddle and I'm just gonna lightly tap this mint. I don't wanna break it up. I really just wanna express some of the oil. So just be gentle. And this is where it, it changes up convention. Even though we have lime juice in here, we are gonna stir this cocktail. It's one of the only cocktails I've ever seen that has a fruit juice, but is actually stirred. So we're gonna add that right in there and stir it down until it's nice, chilled, and diluted. If you forget an ingredient, just pretend like you didn't mess up and this is when you're supposed to add quarter of an ounce of green chartreuse. Whoops, grab our low ball, a clear cube, and then we're gonna strain this cocktail out. And then we're gonna garnish with a nice, beautiful couple of mint sprigs. And there we have the art of choke. Oh, that is so lovely. The chinar gives a nice bitter element. The lime juice gives it just a touch of tartness. The demerara syrup is just a nice touch of sweetness. Spectacular, simple, modern classic. Love it. Next cocktail we're gonna make is another modern classic called the Old Cuban. So first thing we're gonna do is two ounces of an incredible aged rum. I'm using Privateer's Reserve Rum. I love this rum. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice, one ounce of simple syrup, two dashes of Angostura bitters, and a nice handful of mint. This cocktail is kind of like a mojito, French 75 kind of riff, which I think is awesome. And we're gonna add ice to our shaker, lock it up and shake it up. And then we're gonna grab our chilled coupe glass and double strain this right out. Look at that color, it's lovely. But we're not done. The last ingredient is topping it off with some champagne or sparkling wine. And then for the garnish, we're gonna grab one mint leaf, put it in the palm of your hand, spank it like the bad girl that it is, and put it on top. And there you have the old Cuban. Oh, so good. All right, let's move into some slightly more complex cocktails. Just a little bit, nothing too crazy. So the first cocktail we're gonna make is the Isla de Piña, which is an amazingly beautiful, tropical, awesome cocktail. Typically you'd make this cocktail by flash blending it in like a Hamilton Beach blender thing. I don't have one of those. So we're just gonna do it in my little, small little hand blender here. This recipe and quite a few of the other ones in this video actually, I got from Shannon Mustafer's cocktail book Tiki. It is an incredible, incredible book. I definitely recommend it. If you're into rum cocktails, this is a book that you need. So we'll do two ounces of an aged white rum, meaning it was aged and then charcoal filtered. We're using Diplomaticos Planas. It's a really great Venezuelan rum that I've used in my bar and restaurant for the last couple of years, and I love it. We're gonna do a half ounce of a pineapple liqueur, which is also made by Giffard. This one's called uh, Caribbean Pineapple. So we're gonna do a half ounce of this. Ooh, that smells so good. We're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of Pimento Dram by Hamilton. We're gonna do a half ounce of a passion fruit syrup or puree and a half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And then we're just gonna put just a couple of pebbled ice cubes into our blender here, grab our lid, and we're just gonna blend this just for a little bit. And look, it's important that you don't use too much ice in your blender. We're just trying to chill it and get it nice and chilled, but not slushy consistency. We're gonna double strain this out just in case there's any leftover ice pieces. We're gonna grab a miniature clothespin, some pineapple fronds, and we're actually just going to clip that to the side of the glass. And there we have the Isla de Piña. Oh my God. Wow. That just might be one of my absolute favorite cocktails I've ever tried. That's so good. Jesus, that's incredible. The pimento dram gives it a nice spice. The pineapple liqueur is incredible. Passion fruit flavor really comes through, but that rum still finds a way to shine. It's so, so tasty. Really easy to make, but wow. This next cocktail is a really fun tiki cocktail called the Muertito Vivo. And we're gonna need to make something called Don's Mix. 
to start this off. So we're gonna grab a cutting board and a knife. We're gonna need to juice a grapefruit. So we're gonna grab a grapefruit, cut it in half. And I could break out the juicer for this. I'm just gonna do it with the hand squeezer. So we're gonna cut this into fourths to make it easier. I'm gonna grab a glass. We have our juicer here, and then we're just gonna juice some fresh grapefruit. All right, so now that we have quite a bit of grapefruit juice, we are going to, well, first we gotta strain it out. So let's strain this out to get these pieces out of it. And so now that we have some grapefruit juice, we're gonna set that aside for a moment. And to make Dawn's mix, it is basically a mixture of cinnamon, honey, and grapefruit juice which is actually a really good hack if you're trying to make sure your grapefruit juice lasts because grapefruit juice is one of those citrus juices that just doesn't like to stay. It's just like you squeeze it, it's gonna be gone and bad in like a couple of hours. Making Don's mix is actually a really nice way of doing it. So what we're gonna do first is one part grapefruit juice. We're just gonna do one ounce to make it simple. We're then gonna do a half ounce of honey syrup and a half ounce of cinnamon. So it's basically one part honey, one part cinnamon and two parts grapefruit juice. We're going to mix this up, get it nice and incorporated. And there we have our Don's mix. All right, cool. Now that we have that, let's grab our shaker. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of our Don's mix. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of a freshly squeezed lime juice. And now this is where it gets fun and please don't run away after I show you this. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Jägermeister. And I promise it's not gonna overpower this cocktail. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Jägermeister. I guarantee you this is better than what you remember, right? Especially when it's used well. We're then gonna do a half ounce of an overproof rum, which I'm using Hamilton's 151. And then we're gonna do an ounce and a half of an aged Caribbean rum. I'm gonna use 10 to one's dark Caribbean rum. All right, now we're gonna add ice to our shaker. Lock it up and shake it up. Grab our low ball. And then we're going to pour our cocktail right in there. Fill it up with pebbled ice. And then we're gonna garnish with a cinnamon sprig and a edible orchid. And there you have the Muertito Vivo. Whoa, wow. That's, that's amazing. That is a really, really fun tiki cocktail. It's unmistakably tiki because of that Don's mix, but the Jägermeister gives it a nice bitter element. Can't even say Jäger correctly as I'm <laughs> drinking this cocktail and the rum really shines through. Really nice, man, I love this. All right, now let's make a cocktail called the Undead Gentleman, which has, in my opinion, one of the best names of a cocktail ever. So we're first gonna do an ounce and a half of a blended aged Jamaican rum. I'm using Appleton Estate, which is a really great cost-effective Jamaican rum. We're gonna do one ounce of an overproof rum. We're using Hamilton's 151, which I love and use every day at my restaurant. We'll do a half ounce of Falernum. Also, this is probably a good time to mention, this recipe comes from Smuggler's Cove. And if you haven't been to Smuggler's Cove in San Francisco and you like to eat cocktails, you're really missing out. It is one of the best experiences I've ever had in a bar. We're gonna do a half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. We're gonna do a half ounce of that grapefruit juice we juiced earlier. A half ounce of cinnamon syrup. One dash of Angostura bitters. And we're gonna fill this up with ice and shake. And then we're gonna grab our chilled coop. But before we pour it in there, we have to do something very important. We need to rinse this cold coop with the absinthe. So that way it'll kind of adhere to the glass. Normally you could just pour some in, swish it around and dump it out. But I actually have absinthe in an atomizer, which reduces waste for me. So we're gonna grab our glass, spray some absinthe in there, make sure it's all well coated. And uh, I'm using St. George's Absinthe Verit. It's my favorite absinthe. And now we're gonna double strain it out. And for the garnish, we're gonna use intertwined lime peel and grapefruit peel. I'm just gonna express them over the top to get some oils in there. And then we're just gonna intertwine our peels. And garnish with them. And there we have an undead gentleman. Oh, fuck me, that's good. Oh my gosh. Wow. Really cinnamon forward, grapefruit's great. Really nice overall, a really great blend of rums. Of course it's amazing, right? It comes from Martin Kate's Incredible Brain and from Smuggler's Cove, and that's just, wow. Wowzers. All right, guys, I have a bit of a confession to make. Uh, the entire reason why I wanted to make this video is because of this next cocktail, the Tia Mia. I know we already did a Mai Tai variation earlier, but this is by far my favorite rum cocktail ever. And this cocktail comes from Leyenda, and you can find the recipe in Spirits of Latin America. Leyenda is an incredible Latin American inspired bar in Brooklyn. 
and this recipe comes from Ivy Mix, who's the owner of that bar. She's been a huge inspiration for me and for my channel, and I've featured this cocktail a couple of times, but here I am just talking about it again and gushing about it. So um, after all that rambling, let's get to making this incredible, incredible cocktail. So we're gonna do an ounce of Appleton's signature rum, nice funky Jamaican rum. And normally this recipe calls for Del Maguey's Chichi Tapa. I ran out because I make too many of these for friends here at the bar. So we're gonna do an ounce of Del Maguey's Vita instead. It's not gonna be exact, but it'll be close. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of dry curacao. How you like Pierre Ferrand? A half ounce of Borgia, and that's it. Let's add just a couple of cubes to this and lock it up and shake it up. Grab our low ball, pour this out, fill this up with pebbled ice. We're gonna do one dehydrated lime wheel, some really nice luscious mint sprigs, and. Also a edible orchid. I know it looks like overkill, but this cocktail deserves it. It is the queen of cocktails in my opinion, and it is amazing. And there you have the Tia Mia. Personally, one of my favorite cocktails ever made on this planet forever and ever, and I love you. Mm. I'm gonna need a minute. See you guys later. That is absolutely amazing. The smokiness from the mezcal, Complements the funky Jamaican rum beautifully. It's stunningly delightful and tropical and just really refreshing. And my gosh, I am obsessed with this cocktail and I'm just gonna leave it at that. So hopefully with this video, I showed you that there is so much more to rum than just making rums and Cokes and Cuba Libres or those are the same thing, Louis. <laughs> There's so much that you can do with rum and it doesn't have to be the craziest uh, set of ingredients. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you actually want to learn more about rum, I have an entire other video that I did right over here that you can check out next.